Hi, everyone. Rob Rutherford here. Robert Rutherford here. Uh, we're at episode 34. I have Rod Schrader in here from Superior Wall Systems and another one that's been in the industry for a long time. He's going to have a really interesting story to tell today. How are you doing today, Rod? Doing well. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot for coming in. I appreciate you yeah. taking some time out of your day to do this. Not my pleasure. <laughs> so we're uh, kind of pre-post-COVID on this, and uh, everybody's been locked down, so we don't have to cover up on on this uh, episode. Well, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a wild time, that's for sure. Yeah, we got the six foot rule going though. Right yeah, now, yeah, so we're, exactly. We're good to go. <laughs> we're good to go. So, Rod. How many years have you been in the industry? I got in in 1985. Jeez. So yeah, it's been a been a bit. Yeah. And who got you in the in the business? Um, the Dunleavies, Bill, Jim, and Pat Dunleavy. They um, Bill's my stepdad. So they were tapers over at Martin Brothers. I was going to college and knew I wasn't going to be an astronaut or anything like that, and just majoring in attendance. And they said, "Hey, it's time to pick a career." So they got me in the trade. Got it. Got it. And we're they're They're not related to you. Um, Bill is my stepdad. He married my mom. Got it. Got so, it. And, and was, did he have family in the industry? Yeah. His brother, Jim, his brother, Pat, and then their dad actually was an old school plasterer. Got it. And I, you, you came in as your trade is taping. Yes. Yep. Doing the magic. Doing, doing, uh, trying to make it look good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, there's a lot of talent there. Yeah. It, ta it takes a little bit. It's just like anything else. Repetitive, learn what you're doing, work mm -hmm. hard at it and you can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you hang or frame or anything or all taping? Um, at the beginning it was all taping. And then, um, as I moved on through my career, when I went over to, uh, Insel Acoustics, they, um, they let me do a little bit of everything. Um, mm -hmm. hang frame tape, laugh, Roy, oh really yeah Roy was very good at keeping his court group of guys busy and you know if you need didn't have a spot for a taper he'd let you go out and try to learn something else and got I was, it I was fortunate by that and you know over at Martin Brothers I had a superintendent named Rod Hemphill who I think now is in Arizona and working for the union and he came up to me one day and gave me a set of prints and said hey kid you're gonna not just be a taping foreman, you're gonna to need to learn how to do some other things. So he gave me a set of prints, told me to take them home and start learning how to read blueprints. So, wow. Yeah, he was a great mentor. Wow, so they they saw something in you. Well, Rod did, yeah, yeah. And he uh, he was very a very good mentor at the beginning, along with, you know, the family. Sure. Teaching me the right work habits. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll bet all the uh, fire taping looked excellent Oh, no, it was, it was it was rough <laughs> learning how to do it just like anybody else. <laughs> Crawl up in the small spaces nobody else can get in, and yeah, don't bitch about it. Just do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's where you start all your tapers. Just oh. I start them off. You know, same thing: cleaning, fire taping, stocking. Mm -hmm. Just uh, learning it, and you know, you tell them, "Hey, as soon as this is done, you get to do the other stuff." So you kind of motivate them and get sure. them moving, and all of a sudden when they figure out that they don't have to push a broom or scrape the floors anymore, if they get it done faster, mm -hmm. then they're moving on, learning how to do other things. So, yeah. Right. Right. So when you, when you were actually finishing, mm -hmm. how long, how many years did it take you to, to get the touch? Um, I was able to start running work right before I turned out as a journeyman. So about three years I was, I was able to start running work, Rod, I'd asked um, Rod early in my apprenticeship if I could move over to the Marco Wall side of Martin Brothers, the TI, mm -hmm. just to make a name for myself because everybody equated me with the Dunleavies. Got I was it. the Dunleavy. You're getting special privileges because you're a Dunleavy. So I went over and tried to make a name for myself over in there mm -hmm. and just uh, learned from there. And Rod gave me a lot of, a lot of opportunity to learn and I'm not saying I had it down, but I was able to hold my own and uh, start running work right as a journeyman. 
Good for you. So, so being related can be a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, you know, special privileges and they think you're getting all these privileges when actually you're going home and getting chewed out for not doing something right or working hard enough. Or instead of showing up a half hour early, you showed up 20 minutes early and they want to know why you were late. And there's always got the spotlight on you. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was difficult. And, but. It, and, and then you're, you're taking shit from the guys, too. Oh, yeah, that's that's you know. the biggest thing. They go, oh, you get to do this because I had one guy one time when my uh, I was up over at Playa Vista. It was the Hughes headquarters, my first job. And I had one of the my uncle told me to go work with one of the guys running one of the tools. And the guy took the tool, put it in a bucket of water and said, you're on your own. I'm not going to teach you because I don't want you taking my job and left. And so I was sitting there and I had one of the tools, the angle box in my hand, trying to figure it out because he just dumped it in and said, out, I don't want you taking my job. He quit? No, he just walked, went over and started working in a different area and didn't show me how to do anything. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's part of the gig. Yeah. You know what? You almost have to thank him because I learned how to use it. Sure. It took me a couple hours, but I right. learned how to use the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have more mud on you than the wall at first? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a messy, it still is messy. Yeah. Yeah. They, the, um, the tools were in the game then, you know, the bazooka and the, and the, uh, yeah, everything, the box. It was just Ames though back then. Cause they still had their patent. Sure. So everybody was using Ames tools, mm -hmm. the bazooka, the pumps, um, boxes, angle box back then. Nobody really wanted to use an L spotter yet. Mm -hmm. they just called it a waste of time but yeah they uh they were back then and that's what i learned on got it got it so were you um you were doing ti stuff in in marco wall yeah so when i first started over with martin brothers it was the core mm -hmm. and then when i moved over to the marco wall side of it i did uh tenant improvements correct got it so you know offices all nine foot you know yeah just uh, i was like a bag lady they had me go from job to job with my baker downtown la just going wherever whatever job and push my tools and everything over to the job so yeah right. I, I got a got a got fortunate over there i learned a lot of the core mm -hmm. and then once um once got out of the core learned how to do a lot of the ti's mm -hmm. so you know i was pretty rounded in that aspect i was like i said i had good mentors over there yeah yeah. How many years were you at Martin Brothers? I got in in 85 and I believe I left in 92. Okay. So you had a good run over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just me and the superintendent at the time didn't kind of see eye to eye mm -hmm. and uh, was fortunate and called Insel Acoustics up and was able to get on over there right away. At What a trip. And now you're you're back with Tim. And now I'm full circle back with Tim O'Connor. Yeah, what a trip! Yeah, it was a strange world. Because he was, he was a lifer over there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim was. Uh, it, it was tough to leave there, but he'd been there a long time. His mom had worked there, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and and stuff fell apart. Yeah, you know when uh, when Roy was getting ready to sell, I um, at that time my uncle Jim Dunleavy had moved into the union. And um, I asked him about, I'd heard rumors of who he was selling to, and I asked him, and he said, they're bad news. Mm -hmm. And so um, just got fortunate and um, got a phone call from uh, the superintendent over at Superior and said, hey, hey you're interested? And I said, yeah, because I don't want to be down that company when it goes down. I didn't, didn't want to leave everybody over there. They'd become like a family, but, you know, mm -hmm. I was looking out for my family too. Sure. Sure. So you, you had, you had some good timing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, I got, I got, I've been very fortunate in the, my career. The way stuff, you know, just kind of, uh, stuff would fall apart and there would be another opening for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very fortunate and, and do understand that and do not take that for granted at all. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did they send you, um, into some of those wild jobs in Mexico or, or, uh, nah, I, Hawaii or anything? No, nah, I didn't do any of that. The most I did for, um, Insul is, um, I did a lot of the borders books. So mm. I went to Denver, actually Inglewood, Colorado, um, Santa Barbara, um, worked at the San Francisco international airport. Mm. 
but uh, none of the Hawaii or Mexico stuff now. Yeah, those were pretty wild stories. That's what I've heard, yes. You know? Yeah, yeah I wasn't part of it, though. Got it. Got Probably it. wouldn't still be married if I was, so it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that was uh, that was pretty wild stuff, Insel going down in there and, and doing that work and how how what happened with it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now, you know, Roy was willing to take chances. Yeah, he, yeah. he was definitely a risk taker. Yes. You know, yeah. going into these different regions. Very smart man, though. Yeah. yeah I, I respect Roy, utmost respect for Roy. Yeah, is, is he still... Is he still kicking? No, Roy passed. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. So got it. He had a hell of a career. He did, and he did, and stories, and yeah, you know, racing the cars with his brother, and it was, yeah, it was a great time over there. So when you got over to Superior, you were running work for them. I was, um, I was brought in as um, basically the wet trade superintendent, so plastering and taping. Oh wow! Did a little bit of estimating at the beginning for them, a little project managing on any jobs I landed. Got it. So got it. And then and then they moved you into operations manager. Well, no, actually, then um, uh, Randy Mueller at the time was the general superintendent. He uh, retired, and so they asked if I'd like to take over all of the field, and I did so. Um, wow. Yeah. So, you know, Ron's had a lot of um, trust in me and allowed me to pursue, you know, much higher opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so once we were doing, um, I started doing general superintendent and did that for a bunch of years. In fact, just um, just brought in Mike Reeves to be my general superintendent last year. Mm -hmm. And so now started overseeing all the operations and it's it's been a, a process of taking over little bits of pieces and little pieces and, and learning mm -hmm. and, and growing, but we've got a, we've got a great team over there now. Yes. Uh, yes. You, you have some great talent over, yeah. over there. And so you've, you've watched that company grow a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, when I started there, I told my wife, you know, just being the wet trades and a little bit of estimating, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do for 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week, you know, let alone, I just, it was, you know, we were smaller back then mm -hmm. and it's continued to grow. And same thing, you know, Ron's like Roy, he loves to take chances sure, and grow and, and get into all kinds of, I mean, we're, we're TIs, we'll do small jobs, we'll do 60 story towers and mm -hmm. you know, he's not afraid to take anything on. That's for sure. Well, he's, he's, he's confident cause he has the team. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, we we've really built, been able to build a great team over there. I'm I'm really happy with everybody in there, and and you know we like being around each other too, not just work. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it's it's very fortunate. Yeah, that that makes life enjoyable. Yeah, you don't. It's not like you're going to work. You hate it. You can get up and you're like, okay, I'm going to work. It's a good thing. Sure. Uh, you're not dreading going to work. Yeah, yeah, and you're seeing because he he is on the cutting edge yeah you know that company is you know yeah. they're looking they're they're in a sense like martin brothers where they're looking at all this new technology and different ways how to do stuff and willing to take the chances on it yeah yeah he's he does not shy away from any work that is for sure and he is willing to take on anything and everything mm -hmm. and and you guys take a look at what is being put in front of you yeah Yes. You know, and then he's listening, you know, cause you may say, you know what, dude, I, I don't, I don't know about this. Yeah. You know, he, he values and, and takes all of our opinions and, and, you know, makes decisions where it's obviously we're doing very well right now and it's mm -hmm. benefited the company. And, you know, we have to, have to be grateful that he is willing to take chances and not sit on his hands. Sure. Sure. Now the, the panel operation, are you involved in any of that stuff? Um, not not really. We were at the beginning and then, um, you know, as we started growing, kind of had to have their own identity and installers mm -hmm. because it was just too much trying to, you know, do the tenant improvements, the, the larger towers and the bigger core jobs. And then also get guys because, you know, that's a, that's a very specialized trade yeah. installing those panels. Now we did do Montecedro which was uh, a monster job in Pasadena assisted living. Mm -hmm. And we did that and, and we did all right. And it was great to learn very valuable information. I mean, I was there quite a bit trying to learn and we'd brought some people in from Chicago to, to teach us cause they, you know, Midwest, they've been doing that forever, mm -hmm. the panelizing and sure. 
they helped us get along and and start moving forward and it was it was a great experience that was the first one right um it wasn't the first one it was a larger scale the first job we did was actually over by disneyland um spring hill suites oh okay got it and then we've uh we installed um, a few of the vacation rentals out at um, Desert Willow. Mm-hmm. Then we did Montecito, and then um, and then after that, where we were just we were struggling to really keep that because you have to keep those. Once those guys learn that, you have to keep them doing that. Sure. But they were my really good guys, or the Superior's really good guys. So now you're taking away from the other thing that you know got us there. Mm-hmm. So um, you know they're able to install get a, an install group and, and from what i understand they're doing a very good job yeah he's getting a lot of work at yeah that, yes you know? they're they're uh they've gone through their learning curve yes yes i went through that with them yeah so, yeah it was it was great it's again you know great experience and wouldn't give it up for anything and you know there's there's jobs that we're looking at that doing doing another you know some other bigger jobs with them mm-hmm. and uh we'll get back into it yeah, well, it's um, it's not new, right? No. Pan- load bearing is fairly new for metal studs, right? But you know, hanging skins is is not new. Exactly. Yeah, and it it's changed a lot with uh, the different attachment methods to the outside, where you got to have the slip and yeah, you've got well, you've got to have your slip. You've got. I mean, it's. The, the weird thing about panels is when you tell people you can fly a bunch of panels in a day, it's the truth. You can put a bunch of walls up. Mm-hmm. It's the attachments after that takes the time. Exactly. You know, you're, you're putting in a hundred screws for a strap and yeah. you've got guys on their knees welding for days, weeks, months. Sure. Just to get that one panel that went up in about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to where it needs to be for the interior to take over. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of, a lot of coordination. Yes. You know, to be able to make all that happen pre-planning. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's great because everything is decided up front. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, they're very, very limited RFIs. Once the building starts getting being built and um, Mm -hmm. you don't have a whole lot of bust as far as ductwork doesn't fit there, electrical doesn't go there. It's, it's all taken care of before the job starts. Sure. Sure. Are you, do you, um, are you familiar with BIM and all of that stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we BIM a lot of our projects. Do you are are you instrumental on that stuff? No, we have a we have a, a guy that works for us um, out of house. Mm-hmm. He's uh, Bobby Styles. Okay. And he does all of our BIMing for us. So Got it. We set in we set in in meetings, but I sat in one last Friday. Mm-hmm. But um, Bobby pretty much takes care of our BIM. Got it. St- was that Styles laughing? Um, back in the day, I believe Bobby worked for standard. Okay. And then, uh, started his BIM operation. Got it. Got it. So he learned all that computer stuff and uh, yeah. And it's amazing. It is amazing. It's, it's really neat to watch him spin those models. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember, um, you know, going back to like Martin brothers, you know, um, they did that Disney concert hall and that was the beginning of it. It was called Katia. Right. And I remember seeing all that stuff when, you know, they could cut just a small hole through the building and then tell you what was a hundred feet away from it. Yeah, and exactly. Zero in on that. It was amazing. Yeah. It's really neat to see them when they get that model up and you got a guy that's operating it the right way and, you know, spinning it all around and you just, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you, you can visualize it without it. Right, but it's really neat to see the pipes going through and the the electrical coming up and and the framing all tied in together and it's just it's it's very interesting and then moving things over while you're just sitting there in the meeting it's 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 a neat neat thing to watch. Yeah, learning it's quite a tool. Yeah, and you learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you get involved in uh, pre construction with Superior? Yes, yeah. Um, Tim's our pre construction um, guy, and he said we we have Tim and I sit down quite a bit and talk about what's coming up and pre construction and what can we do and value engineering and and trying to really have a stronghold when we do go to scope meetings and know what's going on and once the project's landed, what can we do? What was discussed before the job was landed? What can we do after the job's landed before it actually hits the foreman's hands and we're on site? Got it. Got it. Yeah. So you guys are kicking stuff off of each other. Yes. 
yeah. you know, to, to make yeah, it happen. Like I said, we've, we've really got a good team over there where, you know, people aren't afraid to go into a conference room. Well, pre COVID weren't afraid yeah. to go in a conference room and, and just throw some ideas out and talk about how we can do things. And, you know, can we improve on the schedule? Can we show the contractor, Hey, we can beat your schedule this way. Um, we can help coordinate and get you farther ahead. And it's, uh, cause if you can hit it and you're organized and you can get on a job, then you're going to make money. Right. So sure. it's, there's no egos. We, we all sit down and talk and, and really, bounce things off of each other and, and think what we have at the time, a good idea of and plan and an execution of how to t attack a job. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, and again, like you all get along very well yeah. too. Yes. So that really helps out a lot. Yeah. I've known Tim for over 20 years. Uh, Kevin Hendricks is over there. He uh, heads up the TI division and been together with Kevin for over 15 years now. Mm. So, you know, there's, you know, we've been, your season, the, the core group of people in there, you know, we've all known each other and, and get along and, and know what's going on and, and able to move forward and be productive. Sure. So when you started with Ron, were, was he in the small building over? No, he was, he is, he'd moved over to Orange Thorpe by then. Okay. Got when it. I, when I started with Ron. Got it. Got it. Yeah. He, he had a hell of a story, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah. That was a very interesting he one. Really you guys had. He, he's, uh, the guy came up from nothing. He came up from nothing and still just, he's just a ton of energy. And like I said earlier, he was, wants to go bigger, better, mm -hmm. whatever. Let's take it on guys. Let's show them who we are. That's good. Yeah. It's That's great. good. Now. So you're, you're in charge of all the hiring for all, for all trades. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a, for the most part, yeah, I have a hand in, um, hiring and the field and scheduling and, and all that in the field. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this new labor coming into the game? Uh, I was saying that the video games were in construction and I, I, I believe it. And that starts from the top to where, you know, it's computers and they're not really drawing it out, uh, the kids, they, the guys that come into the field, a lot of them, they played video games. Mm -hmm. They don't know what going out and riding your bike for eight hours a day and chasing and yeah, and doing all that stuff and being out and working hard and getting stuff. They, mm -hmm. they don't understand it. And, you know, I don't know what the, what the success rate is for, you know, apprentices, but it's much lower. I can guarantee it's much lower than it used to be. Sure. You got in the industry, you were in there and you knew that was your career and it was hard work and you were going to do it. Mm -hmm. Or you were going to end up getting, you know, 10, 14 W-2s a year because right. you couldn't hold a job. Sure. You know, so you, you learned and you understood. But the kids nowadays, you know, a lot of them end up living at home for a long time. They're they're not used to the hard work. And I just have guys that will call me and say, hey, Rod, thanks for the opportunity, man. The same for me. Mm -hmm. And it happens more and more as I get older, you know, yeah. at the beginning, it happened every once in a while. I get it. It's not for everybody. It's sure. really not. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, wow, I gotta, I gotta show up at five 30 in the morning and work really hard and then go home and do it again. Ah, the same for me. Yeah. It's, um, it's not for everybody. Right. It, it's, it, it's difficult. It, it's very difficult on the other side of the coin. They've like when you were in the game, you were bringing your own water, mm -hmm. right? And the you didn't even have a place to wash your hands. No, you washed your hands in a bucket of water. You, you right. went by and you stuck your hands in a bucket of water and wiped them down and moved on. Yeah. Yeah, brought your own water. If you were thirsty, you had to bring your own water. And let's be honest, safety wasn't the same. No, it wasn't. Then get out there and do it. it well, how? Well, figure it out. It's got to be done. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you got it done. Yeah, exactly. You got it done. And again, it's not right, you know, being unsafe, but yeah, things it's, I've, it, I've been lucky. Like I said, um, I've got to see a lot of change in the, in the industry and a lot of it is computers are good, you know, for the yeah. industry, but you know, a lot of it is, um, just progressing to where the kids, you know, they come in and they, they're able to look on their phone at a set of prints and they're 19 years old. No, you do this. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. We had landlines. We didn't have beepers when I got in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You had a walkie-talkie. 
Yeah. Just for a, the guy on the job. Exactly. They had a walkie talkie and then they went to beepers and then those next hell beep phones, the leashes. Yeah. Yeah. But kids nowadays, they just, my grandson, he freaking, I was visiting with them in Arizona and he's pulling up the Apple TV going, Hey, I'm going to watch this. Okay. Pops. And I'm like, oh, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's computers. They're, they're coming a long ways and the kids, they're technically, they're farther, way farther advanced than we ever were. Sure. But, you know, that hard work thing, you got to really keep driving into the guys. Yes. It, you know, if you love your children, you'll teach them how to work. Yes. Because if if you know how to work, you're always going to have a job. Exactly. Yeah. It's you, you still work ethic into your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, don't show up on time. Show up early. Sure. You know, sure. work hard. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's it's values that you can carry. Like you said, you can carry on for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, at, you know, the th it's all about survival, right? Right. So if you're, if you're a hard worker, you're usually willing to learn too. Yes. You know, so you're always going to be employed because they're, those guys are hard to find. Yes. They're yeah. getting harder to find, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting tougher to, you know, well, I only lose a hundred bucks if I miss Friday. You know, and they'll mm -hmm. take a three day weekend and, you know, their flat tire or grandma's mm -hmm. sick or whatever. And, and, you know, I've had to explain to guys, you may be a great worker when you're here, but if you're only here four days a week, I'll take the guy that's here five days a week and here early and willing to work all day. Sure. You know, I don't care if you're, you're better mechanic than him. Mm -hmm. I'll take the guy that's willing to work all day, every day mm -hmm. over a guy that just, ah, I don't, I don't need to be there five days a week. And then he does what they don't understand is that they're hurting their, their foreman. They're hurting the job. Yeah. Well, you're depending on them. Yeah, exactly. You got to get this stuff done. Yeah. And they, they just don't get it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know it when they're in their twenties, they're not as serious as when they get up near 30. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. And you know what? It's not, I'm sure you were the same. I moved out when I was 19 years old. Mm hmm. You know, a lot of these kids, they're 25, 27 years old. Yeah. And if their parents aren't making them pay rent, they don't think they have to go to work every day. Exactly. Because they get enough money for gas and food and a beer or whatever they want to have after work. Sure. So, you know, it's it's not that big a deal with them. When you have, if you hire somebody that has responsibilities, they understand it. Exactly. And they work harder. Yep. Yep. They They appreciate their job. Exactly. They really do. They really do. And, you know, I hear, you know, from the younger, well, you know, gas wasn't $3 a gallon and rent wasn't 1800 bucks a month. And well, it, it was still expensive. I started off making $4 and 25 cents an hour in the trade. So yeah, gas wasn't three bucks a gallon, but I was also making $4 and 25 cents. Exactly. So yeah, it's exactly it goes with the times. It does. It does. But, you know, that's part of, the, you know, everybody wants to make it easier for their family. And sometimes it's too easy. Mm -hmm. You know, they it, it's human nature. So you're going to take as long as somebody keeps giving. Yes. Is, is what ends up happening. And, and that's just human nature. 100 percent. That, yeah. that that ends up happening. Do you have any family in the industry? Um, my I have I have twin boys and one of my sons, Tyler, he's now working for us. He's been with uh, Superior for about two years now. Mm -hmm. He's uh, just got promoted a little while ago to a project manager. OK, so he's in the office. And, Congrats. Yeah, thank you. And he just got married. So. All right. So now he's got some heat. Yeah. Now, he, yeah. now he knows. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he knows what it's about. In fact, had to have a virtual wedding because of COVID. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to keep their wedding date that they had set. And so they were able to keep it, but they just did a, did a virtual wedding. So got it. And my other son just moved to Arizona. He's in the Navy mm. and, uh, have two beautiful grandchildren from them. So congrats. That's, that's just where we were just last weekend. Got it. Yeah. Got it. What, what part of Arizona? Um, he's living in Peoria now. Okay. So he was uh, stationed in Honolulu mm -hmm. for about four and a half years on a sub. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nuke sub. He worked on the nukes. So no not, the, not the weapons or anything, but the yeah. engine. And, sure. Uh, he's going to do his last few years or what probably could be his last few years in Arizona as a recruiter. Is that right? Yeah. So he, he was a mechanic? 
Um, I, I think he's actually a nuclear electrician, electrician's 